Hey folks, it's Sean here from the Calling Out Community and Call Out Films. And today I'm continuing my new video series, Last Days Dawning, investigating many biblical signs of the times, written in the Old and New Testaments over thousands of years, about specific events to come, which are the warning signs of the beginning of a great time of God's wrath upon a fallen mankind, which the Bible calls simply the Tribulation. Now some of these events have taken place in the past with limited intensity, but we've never seen a period in human history when they all began to take place at once. Until now, that is. And with such a ferocious intensity that even the casual observer will have to sit up and take the overall message with grave seriousness. In Matthew 24, 8, the disciples came privately to Jesus at the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem one day, and they asked him a point-blank question that had likely been troubling them for a while, a question that people have probably asked for thousands of years since. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming again, and the end of the world? Now Jesus had been teaching for some time that he was going to be offered up as a living sacrifice for the sins of man and he'd be rejected by the people of Israel. He foretold of a day when he'd come again to the earth to establish a kingdom. This was welcome news to the people of Israel at that time who were living under Roman oppression. They thought Jesus was going to overthrow Rome, but he had a much bigger plan in mind. They couldn't fathom him dying on the cross, rising from the dead, ascending back to heaven, and promising then that he'd come again. They couldn't fathom our world population of 8 billion when they only had 300 million in the entire world at that time. They couldn't imagine Jesus one day having 2.4 billion followers worldwide on continents that they didn't even know existed yet. They were thinking very finitely, living in the now. They wanted Jesus to tell them when, which could also be translated as at what time until these things are to happen. The generation's old question asked by children around the world, Daddy, are we there yet? Maybe that's why he waited to give the book of Revelation, his greatest visions of the end of the world, to the Apostle John, the last living disciple, who was exiled on the Isle of Patmos, cut off from the rest of the other disciples as an 80 plus year old man. All the others were already beheaded, crucified upside down, stabbed to death, burned alive, thrown to the lions, and Jesus' kingdom hadn't come yet. John's visions were so incredibly specific and so vivid at that time, anyone reading and understanding them over the centuries would realize their generation wasn't the one to see it all fulfilled. This kingdom was going to take a while to develop. 2,000 years and counting, in fact. No one then could have predicted any of that. But before he died, the Apostle Peter, inspired by God, obviously, wrote in 2 Peter 3.4 that believers would eventually begin to give up on this notion of Jesus coming back to the earth at all, sarcastically asking, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. In other words, Nothing's changed in hundreds or even thousands of years. My grandpa died, my great-grandpa died, my great-great-grandpa died. Nobody's seen it yet. Why am I to believe it's going to ever happen? But that's just it. If we claim to be believers in God, if we claim that the Bible is true, if we truly believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God to mankind, then the Bible sets itself up for absolute failure by predicting so many detailed future events through Daniel, Ezekiel, Matthew, John the Revelator, Peter, Paul, and other biblical writers over the centuries. If none of these events are ever going to happen, the Bible is a total fraud. If 50% of the events happen at once, that would still be a failure. 80% of them? For the Bible to be the true word of God, there will have to be a generation of believers that will eventually see it all fulfilled. And it would have to be so obvious that non-believers could be told about it and see it too. Now people have set dates in the past and failed, but that's because they couldn't demonstrate all of these signs of the times during their generation. Then others come along and quote Jesus' own words from Matthew 24:36 
when he told his disciples that asked for a sign that of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The religious crowd would say, see, we can't know when Jesus is coming back. We're not supposed to set dates. And as a result, people continue to believe less and less that Jesus is coming back at all. But the words of Jesus are very specific. When he said we wouldn't know the day, the hamera, the literal day, the interval between sunrise and sunset, which is distinguished from and contrasted with nighttime. In other words, the daytime. And the word hour, hora, was a definite time, the twelfth part of the daytime, or an hour, daylight hours from the rising to the setting of the sun. What's Jesus saying here? Not that believers wouldn't know the time period of his return. Why bother telling us signs of his return at all if the events don't pinpoint to a specific time in history? That would seem like a colossal waste of time. And what purpose would it serve? No, the Bible puts its entire credibility on the line by boldly telling of these events to come, advising us that they will all pinpoint at one specific period in history and then leaving those events to actually unfold at that point of history as a warning of God's wrath to come. Now many non-believers today mock a God that would bring wrath to a fallen man. It's a sign that he couldn't possibly love us. If he exists at all, they snort. But they don't seem to get that God gave us so many signs of his wrath to come. So that... And he's provided 2,000 years for people to get their act together. Come to God, repent of their sins for their evil ways before he finally has had enough of the sins of mankind. That sounds like a whole lot of love, patience, mercy, and grace to me. If a street sign says that Montreal is 28 kilometers away, friend, it's not 35 or 25, it's 28 because someone has taken the time to measure it out and simply tells us what the facts are. Signs of the times in the Bible operate the same way. The Bible authors foretold of these signs because they could actually see the events unfold as they were. And yes, they didn't know specifically when the date and time was going to be. But when you read them all together as a whole, written over countless generations, it's like each one draws a part of a map. And when it's completed and you look at all the pieces together, it gives you the precise coordinates of a buried treasure. Jesus literally was simply saying that no one would be able to get so specific as to say, it's going to happen at 3 p.m. on June 14th, 2018. You'd be more likely to win the Powerball jackpot than to get it perfectly right. But the season? The month even? The events themselves will unfold together in such a way as to make that pretty obvious. Otherwise the signs themselves are meaningless. The warnings to repent and change mankind's ways would be lost. The whole point of warning us would be missed. And then we could say that God was evil or mean for not warning us specifically in advance. We'd be justified then. <laughs> but sorry friend, you don't have any excuse now. I'm going to demonstrate in upcoming videos should Jesus be delayed in returning that the snowball is rolling down the hill now. It's gathering momentum, speed, and size. Welcome to the end of the road, the beginning of the final destination that the Bible talks about. I'm not gonna predict dates. The events are unfolding with such pinpoint accuracy, you just have to look up from your smartphone and look around, and you'll realize you're in the deep end of the swimming pool right now, biblically, friend. Let's hope you're wise enough to heed the warnings in my videos to come and the Bible messages of the day so that you can swim to safety. Drowning is your right. <laughs> it is your choice. But it's pretty unnecessary.